The Court of Appeal in Abuja has adjourned indefinitely hearing into the leadership crisis rocking the People's Democratic Party. A three-man panel of justices led by Justice Ibrahim Salawa suspended hearing on the matter to await the outcome of a related case pending before another court in Port Harcourt, the River State Capital. The decision followed a motion filed by the Ali Modusheri faction of the party. The group's counsel, Aki Olujimi, asked the court not to attend to the suit filed by the Senator Ahmed Makarifi faction. The defense counsel's argument was based on the fact that the Port Harcourt's division of the court has already reserved judgment on the matter. In that suit, the appellants are challenging a verdict that Justice Oko Nabang of the Federal High Court in Abuja delivered on June the 30th, which recognized Sharif as national chairman of the party. To aviation now, and as aviation fuel scarcity persists across the country with a large number of flight disruptions and passengers having to face delays or outright cancellation of flights, well, Eric Air has been explaining that owing to its large scale of operations, it's the worst hit by the scarcity of Jet A1. The managing director of the airline, Mr. Chris Ndulwe, while asking for patience from passengers, says the airline is making provisions to address the situation. Aviation fuel. This commodity accounts for about 40% of any airline's operations. Jet A1 is imported into Nigeria and subject to fluctuations in the foreign exchange market. In the last 12 months, aviation fuel has steadily climbed from 104 naira to 250 naira per litre in Lagos, and even higher in the northern part of the country. As the Yule tide approaches, the situation is the same, but perhaps more critical as airlines have to source fuel from other destinations apart from Lagos. Arik Air, Nigeria's largest carrier by fleet and route connection, appears to be the worst hit. You know, the last time I went to London with we in Kano, I was a passenger on the flight. And, you know, these are disruptions. And um, on that flight, I even tried to explain to passengers, it costs more to buy fuel in Kano. So why would we come to Kano to buy? But if we cannot get it in Lagos, we we'll decide to land in Kano or go to Gabon or any other place to buy. As cancellations and delays persist across the country, the airline says passengers remain at the heart of its business. I recognize that uh, there's no passenger who comes to the airport ready to fight or to start uh, sweating and going through um, a lot of hazards just to be able to travel. Anytime that there's a delay, aircraft is sitting on ground waiting for fuel, waiting for anything. You know, money is being lost. Beyond destinations and connections, airline maintenance and safety remains a critical issue. Arik is maintaining it, and that is proven quite clearly by uh, our IHOSA accreditation, which is the, uh, the IATA operational safety audit that was done two months ago. And line painters is done by various companies. We talk Lufthansa Technique, we talk CLS, we talk Samco, and we're talking South African Airways. All of those companies that maintaining our aircraft is IHASA, European, and FAA approved. Eric Air says in its 10 years of operation, it has safely transported about 20 million passengers across its network of 19 domestic, 10 regional and 3 international destinations. Let's cross over to Abuja now. Here's Ibrahim Adra. Ibrahim. Ijama, good to see you. The Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation and some international oil companies have signed an agreement to exit the joint venture cash core arrangement. This brings to an end NNPC's counterpart funding for 60% equity shareholding it owns in various oil and gas fields in international and indigenous oil firms. The Minister of State for Petroleum, Dr. Ibe Kachuku, says a governance process will be set up to manage a new funding mechanism. Our correspondent, Omelo Gonadi, reports. 
Statistics from the September 2016 operations report of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation show that $712 billion was earmarked for NNPC's cash calls funding for 2016 alone. Cash calls is a counterpart funding the NNPC pays annually for the 60% equity shareholding it owns in various oil and gas fields operated by international oil companies and indigenous oil firms. In 2016, underfunding for cash calls amounted to $2.5 billion, bringing the national oil firm's total cash call arrears over the years to $8.5 billion. Presenting the 2017 budget to the National Assembly Wednesday, President Muhammadu Buhari confirmed that funding for cash calls will cease by January 2017, barely three weeks away. In 2016, the budget was prepared on the principles of zero-based budgeting. This sets the stage for a review of the cash calls agreement, with the NNPC opting out of the existing agreement creating an opportunity for the adoption of a more sustainable funding arrangement with international oil companies' joint venture operations. Today, we are witnessing, we are going to witness the signing of the exit cash flow, which essentially comprises of three components. Tasking oil companies to put their monies where their mouths lie the minister says a governance process will be set up shortly. There's still a lot of work to be done, obviously. We need to get this after the signing ceremony. We need to set up the governance processes that uh, the government approved. And that's a lot of work again on work at uh, the uh, team. But, but I think it's going to take us past, um, get to a point where we can look back and say, why have we survived these all these years? I challenge the oil companies now to put their money where their mouth is. This exit agreement puts paid to the $8.5 billion owed IOCs and puts a stop to the $700 million paid monthly to the companies by the NNPC. It also paves way for a mechanism that will allow the joint venture business finance itself by retaining its operating costs and capital allowances, saving Nigeria about $8.4 billion annually. Omelogo Nadi Channel Television News. The federal government is on a rescue mission to correct the economic damage done by previous administrations. This is according to the Minister of Budget and National Planning, Mr. Udoma Udodoma. He made this known today after the National Economic Meeting in Abuja. He blamed the current economic crisis on the financial mismanagement of the last administration for failing to save despite the oil boom. Asita's correspondent, Chukuma Onyokusi, reports. <coughs> The vice president, governors of the 36 states of the federation, and key ministers in the cabinet in what looks like a presentation of their scorecard for the last one year were said to have applauded the vice president for galvanizing the team to ensure economic recovery in the Buhari administration. Minister of Budget and National Planning speaks on the planned period of 2017 and 2020, an effort to grow the economy. At the end of it, we should have grown by we should be growing at a minimum of 7%. Kaduna State Governor says NEC also identifies some of the areas where the administration has performed despite the difficult times. This administration adopted and implemented Treasury Single Account. And many states, including my own state of Kaduna, did the same. Uh, the Treasury Single Account project has been going on for three years without closure. It is this administration that was able to close it and get it implemented. NEC took examples from the revolution going on in Lagos and a number of states, but most of all applaud the vice president for the way and manner he's integrated the state governments into the economic policies of the administration. I've sat through similar economic council meetings, have noted a marked difference between how things were being done with the federal government going off in one direction and the states going off in another without any coordination. In a question and answer session, Kaduna State Governor 
joins the Minister of Budget and National Planning to react to critics of the administration in the areas of poverty alleviation and economic management team. And remember when we left office, the price of oil was just about $75 a barrel. But we left behind $40 billion reserves and $27 billion in excess good account, which we saved. The people that came after us blew that. We did not, we did not, and are not responsible, this administration, for the current economic situation we find ourselves in. We are actually a rescue team, a team working on rescuing Nigeria from the position we find ourselves in. And under the leadership of President Mohamed Buhari, we are determined we're determined to take Nigeria out of this situation. Council says there will be greater collaboration between the state and federal governments in the new year. Tukuma Onrekusi, Channels Television News. The governor of Ekiti State, Mr. Ayodele Fayoshi, today visited the Ado Ekiti branch of the Zenit Bank to make a withdrawal from his previously frozen account. This follows a federal high court order asking the bank to defreeze the governor's account. A federal high court in Adoikiti had on Tuesday ordered that Governor Fayoshi's accounts in Zen Bank be defrozen with immediate effect. I came to the bank after serving them the court's uh, order that my money should be given to me immediately without delay. And I made up my mind I won't, I won't, I won't leave this bank until I collect my money. And they've done the needful, and I have written a check to get some of the money which they have uh, given to me, confirming that they have obeyed the court order. I want to thank Nigerians. I want to thank my supporters, people who believe in my cause, who believe that Nigerians should not be oppressed. They placed land on two accounts. One has 82 million, the other one has 300 million. So I have uh, put through my check. I've been able to get five million today, which means that the bank has made up their mind to obey the court orders. And when the news at 10 returns, Nigeria's unemployment rate rises further to 13.9% in third quarter of 2016. Action Business News to join us again.